Hello everybody. Welcome to another charge to Nigerian Nigerians. Today I'm going to talk about our governors again. Everybody is in trouble because they are going to be exposed. I'm talking today about how our governors are killing Nigeria. How our governors are killing Nigeria. Now this information that I'm going to give to you today is actually official. There is a document that is called Numer uh, Remuneration Package of Political, Public and Judicial Office Orders. So Nigeria government has a standard for this. And this is why I always say it is not re restructure we need, we need reconstruction. Because this numer uh, remuneration, remuneration package needs to be, you know, reassessed and repackaged and reviewed. You know, so it's a package for political, public and judicial office orders uh, and it's under the Revenue and Mobilization Allocation Fiscal Commission that is in Abuja, of course, they have their head office there. So they look into the allowances which the governors are entitled to. So that is the document. This is the official, we're not talking about the one that is not official, the money they are getting. Last time I spoke about the security vote, that is not official money that the governors are getting. These are just the ones that, you know, are official. So, of course, some of these uh, allowances that we're going to see here, some of them are every month, like periodically, or every six months or something like that. Some of them are periodical. But there are some of the allowances that these governors are getting that are not monetized. There is no amount of money that is put on them. For example, provide cars for the governor. Providing cars for the governor, they don't put a... a the car could cost 10,000 10, now, it could cost 100,000. Another car could cost 100 million. There is no specific money that is on top of it. So a governor is entitled to three or four or six or ten cars. That's what they will provide for him. And, you know, and uh, according to the preference of the governor, really, a lot of provisions that are in that document is according to the preference of the governor. So if you are a governor, you tell the government or your state, to provide for you everything that you need according to your preference. That is a way to bankrupt your state. That is a way to ban bankrupt the country. And that's why I say these governors, with the way they are living, and they are not to blame for it. It is the whole structure, the entity of Nigeria is set up in a way as to provide only for the few people, for the few elite. We are the political elites, the people, the few people who plan to eat the national cake for themselves. The, 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 the way the country is set up is not for the general masses, it's just for a few people. So governor's salary is made of three items. Basic salary, then of course basic salary, everybody has basic salary. But why should they include in the allowances of government, of the governor, what is called hardship allowance? Hardship allowance. You want to tell me that the greatest hardships in Nigeria are, are being, are being are going, uh, what the governments are going through? You want to tell me that the governors and the senators and the politicians are the ones who are going through hardship in the land? Hardship allowance. Now I can understand that so there was something like hardship allowance for the colonial masters. Because for them, yes, it was hardship for them to come from Europe and live here with us and live, you know, it's, it's a great hardship. So they needed hardship allowance. But you, Unko, you, <laughs> you that was born in one village or in one Ajegule or something there, now you are getting hardship allowance. Didn't you leave before you became governor? You didn't go through hardship. Is the governors, are, are the governors and the senators are people who are going through hardship in Nigeria? What about the market women? They don't have hardship, eh? What about school children that are going barefooted? They don't have hardship? What about people who are dying in the hospitals without provision, without anything to provide for them? No medicals and no, no medications. They are not, they are not going through hardship. Can you imagine a country paying hardship allowance to all the citizens? But here is the reverse situation. It is the citizens that are paying hardship allowance to the already rich and wealthy governors. Hardship allowance for where? When, is it because of, the, is it the mansion you are living in that is giving you the hardship? Is it the retinue of cars that you have that is giving you the hardship? 
Is the hardship coming from, from all the allowances and the salary that you are getting? Is that where the hardship is coming from? Because this hardship allowance is not just for governors. Though. The hardship allowance is also for senators. Maybe it has gotten to a local government. You see, the elite, the few elites in Nigeria are killing this country. They, that's why we are the poorest country in the world. Because the people don't care. Nobody cares about the ordinary citizens. All the things that could be taken is being taken. So there are three, you know, categories of you know, number of uh, number uh, or allowances or bonuses for the governors. One is basic salary. Second one is hardship allowance. Third one is constituency allowance. Those, but are you sure the constituencies even know that they are giving them allowance for their constituencies? Of course they don't know. Most of them will not know because it's, it, just, it just goes to the governor. According to that, you know, commission that I spoke about, RMAFC, uh, the commission, the, you know, a governor is entitled to a monthly basic salary of only 180,000. 180,000 naira, like it's small, right? But there are other allowances and bonuses, and there are other services that are provided that are not monetized. You remember I told you? To the taste of the governor, the governor could tell what he wants and the, the state just provides it for you without putting a price on it. But it's also entitled to a monthly hardship allowance, which is 92,000 naira. And monthly consistency allowance. What is consistency allowance? Cons consist consistency. Consistency. That you are consistent. Doing what? Consistency allowance of 648 million or oh, 628,000 I think 648,000 that's two thousand dollars or so 648,000 consistency consistent in what <laughs> so this add up to a monthly salary of 648,000 or an annual sum of 7 million 782 so it's 7 million 700 7 point uh, 7 million Naira is what they receive uh, as month as yearly salary, but that is not all. Oh. that's not all. That's just the beginning. There are other allowances that governors are uh, that are not you know that governors receive, but they are not counted as part of the basic salary that we just told, told you about. Uh, that, for example, ten percent is called leave allowance. So they go on a leave, they take two hundred and twenty-two thousand. <laughs> and, and 370. So 222,000 as leave allowance. That's per annum. They have to go on leave and you need to pay them for it. And this money is coming from you, from the citizens of the states that are already poor. Should a governor so desire, he, he, he is also entitled to 400% motor vehicle loan. So he, he, he can, he, 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 it's his own desire. He can say, I need allowance for, I need a bonus for. Uh, cars and they will give him 400 percent of his salary so whatever his salary is for it will be multi it's multiplied it will be 400 percent of his salary just to buy cars that comes to 8 million 8.8 .8 million uh just for cars and for uh, car allowance when a governor finishes his term uh, completes his tenure he's entitled to 300 percent of his salary right as, severe, as severance allowance to severe his, uh, his, uh, his activities or his duty, which amounts to 6,670,000. Then, <laughs> what, is even, what is worrisome to me is some of these governors then will go to the Senate and they will keep on, they will keep on receiving what they are receiving from the state. And then go to the Senate and keep and go and receive even more there. They will receive, they will, some of them will become ministers. Some of them will become, you know, so the, the, the basic idea is that they are the elite. And since they are the elite, they go and just sit on the commonwealth of the nation and begin to divide it upon themselves, as, as, either as governors or as senators. But the whole idea is that. The commonwealth of Nigeria doesn't belong to Nigerians at all. It belongs to the few elite. This is the kind of madness that is going on. But you cannot see anything like this in a Western country. No Western 
politician who, you know, are, even Western politicians are poor. They cannot do anything like this. They are poor. And yet, okay. So, so, but this is the kind of problem that we have. However, the majority of the allowances that these governors are entitled to are not actually monetized. So the majority of the, gov gov the money that comes to them is what they get in provision, that the, the state must provide this for them. This means that the state makes full provision for such items, even without putting cash to it, you know, to the taste of the government. So the government could say it needs some things you know, for him to serve for his service, like 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 I spoke about already about you know you know uh, the cars he needs, or uh, he could talk about he could say okay let's talk about those cars. Let's say he had three or four, five, six, ten, twenty cars. The car will be fueled, and for them to be the fuel for those cars every day, you don't monetize it. It's just like operational. So there is no salary, no, it's not coming from the governor, it's coming from the states. Or let's talk about maintenance. Those cars are being maintained or repaired or by, by the states. So the budget just keep on providing for these kind of things. But let me tell you some other expenses that the governor... So when this governor that I really respect, Mackinde or so his name, uh, Shegi Mackinde from Oyo State, the other day he said, oh, how can governors be receiving such a small salary because... Uh, uh, the salary is too small, that's why they are stealing. But I, I don't expect that from him because he knows he should know better. He should know better that if you are not a thief, you will not be, you will not steal. Nothing will push you to steal. But that's uh, firstly. Secondly, they are already receiving so much other benefits and allowances that the basic salaries is nothing. It's chicken change for them. For example, the state still pays for the governor to have a special assistant. And all the expenses and the salary and all the things that are co connected with that, the state budget has to take care of that. Even though that is not in his uh, allowance or in his salary. Apart from special assistance, the state will still have to sponsor and provide for him, a, the governor, with a personal assistant. Special assistant, personal assistant. Then, you know, some of them are many. Sometimes it's not one, sometimes it's not two. And the state has to provide for that because of the government. See all the things. If, for example, if you are a businessman or you are just an ordinary individual, what kind of money should you make to be able to have all this assistance? But one of the most uh, humiliating and shameful thing that the state government and federal government in Nigeria does is that they pay the governors or they, you know, give them allowances or make provisions for the governors to, to, to have domestic staff. So, you know, the all, that is the, fed, the, government, the money of the government is being directed to take care of slaves. For, and these slaves are the same citizens. So, you know, in a normal country, in a civilized country, every citizen is supposed to be elevated. Every citizen is supposed to, the government is supposed to work for the citizens. But here, the government, is being, the government is paying the governors, the politicians are paying themselves to keep other citizens low, to keep them as mates and domestic staff. It's shameful because the whole commonwealth of the country is meant for this kind of elite people. And the, all, the rest of the nation are just like domestic staff, like slaves. Then the, gov the state will still have to pay for entertainment allowance. What is entertainment allowance? You have uh, allowance for personal assistance, uh, allowance for uh, special assistance, allowance for domestic, assist uh, domestic staff, allowance for entertainment. Then you have what they call allowance for utilities. Then you have security allowance. Then you have allowance for newspapers and periodicals. <laughs> what is happening? And you say that salary is small, the basic salary. But by the time you add all this together, this is like the whole industry. This money could have translated into, can you imagine how many hospitals this could build? How many children, how many child mortality this could have prevented? How many maternal mortality this could have prevented? How many good roles could have been provided in every street, in every local government, in every state? How, much, how many schools could have been renovated? How many classes could have been built? How many hospitals, you know, world-class hospitals could have been constructed? Can you imagine how much houses could have been having water supply and, I mean, toilets? Do you know that only 15% of uh, Nigerian homes have toilets? 
and then this past, these uh, governors are living large and taking advantage of all these things, killing the country and saying they are serving the, the people. Can you imagine how many houses will have been provided electricity for and electricity meters for? So how many homes could have, have sufficient money, not living on $2 or $1 uh, a day, but how many, you know, sufficiency would have come to the family of everybody? You see, these people, these governors are part of the people killing Nigeria. And we need to look at a way to reconstruct our country. We need to look at the fact that our governors must become our servants. Our governors must see themselves as ministers. Ministers means servants. They must, you know, our politicians must see themselves as servants of the people. You must go to the pol to for, for politics only if you want to serve. If you don't want to serve, don't go there. If you want to just live large and big, don't go into politics. Let's begin to do like in the West. I mean, the politicians ride on bicycles and they go to serve. That is what we need. And we need, you know, voices, the, the uh, population, the voices of the people, the voice of the of, uh, uh, pressure groups, social organization, NGOs, we need to begin to raise our voices and say no, thus far and no more for the love of God, church and nation. Peace.